Hi everyone, welcome back to the Cider Shed uh, where we are continuing with our Somerset Cider Odyssey and we have a new cider from a producer we've already tried a couple of ciders from um, well I say ciders, one of them was made purely from quince I don't know if that qualifies as cider a fruit wine, I don't know what you'd call it anyway, so, and once again it has a beautiful label because it's by Martin Berkeley in Shepton Mallet so Pilton Cider is the uh, the brand, if you like. This one is called Pom Pom, and it is a keep cider with quince added. So we've had a pure quince um, cider from Martin, uh, which smelled amazing. Actually, I couldn't figure out what the wine was it smelled like during that video. And afterwards, usually about two minutes after I turned off the camera, it came to me, which is what usually happens. And what it smelled exactly like was an amazing Riesling, Alsatian German dry Riesling, some of the best Rieslings to get almost like a petroleum character to them, which I love and I absolutely had that. If you had to, if not told me what it was, I'd have said that is a Riesling, European Riesling, Alsatian, German, whatever. Um, so yeah, that's why I love the smell so much is because that's what it smelled like and I love, those are probably some of my favourite wines in the world. Anyway, Born dry in the palate though, it's quite different and sparkling, so not like a so that's where the similarity ended. But on the nose, pfft, yeah, absolutely Alsatian slash German Riesling. Let's see what this is like. Um, so yeah, keeved cider, so you expect some residual sugar. When you keeve quince, apparently, there is no residual sugar. But when you keeve apples, cider, whatever, there is residual sugar left over from the fruit. So let's take off this top and see what we've got inside. So quince as discussed previously some of it is a fruit that you can't really eat, you can't eat raw you have to cook it so more com commonly it's made into jam or in like the Iberian Peninsula in Spain it's made into membrillo which is a set jam quince paste um, and it's delicious uh, so let's try this out so hang on a sec let's pour a bit out so bottle conditioned fine mousse fine bubbles what is the ABV on this let me just find out 4.8 very civilized 4.8. I actually like the low alcohols, I really do. You can drink more of it. Um, and actually, in really well made ciders, that doesn't mean um, you know you're losing anything in terms of flavor. I've got some like the, the Guatkin 4.5 original blend, brilliant cider, brilliant cider 4.5%. It's fantastic. You can just drink more of it, it's brilliant. You can sell more of it, which is brilliant. Okay, here we go. So, what are we thinking about that? That is oh, it's gold with a very, very subtly pinkish hue, I would suggest. Um, quite fine bubbles, plenty of them. Um, very bright, but if it's keeved, you'd expect it to be bright. Though we did have that keeved cider from Secret Orchard very recently. There was, you couldn't see, it was opaque, you couldn't see through it at all. So I need to ask Joe about that, because keeved cider should, in theory, be, be uh, bright, because it's a fining process. That's, that's part of the, you know, that's why the French do it as much as anything. It's the, it's the way they fine it, give you a brighter, finished product. Anyway, let's give this a sniff, shall we? Okay, some funk on this. Definite funk on the back end. Or well, on the front end, if you like. Very delicate nose, actually. Um, primary thing I'm getting is like a funkiness. Almost like a sulphur element. Um, which isn't a bad thing. I don't mind that. Um, a lot of brilliant ciders have that. And there's a little bit of fruit starting to come through now. But I couldn't say exactly what fruit that was. There's a hint of something in the background. This is super cold though. Um, because again, it's got one of those corks in. So if you if you, if you you open them too warm, sometimes they can explode and you can lose a lot and da da da. So it's, you know, you have to kind of, you have to chill them down. Let me just see if I can get some warmth into this. A hint of something coming from the back now, and actually, I would suggest it's more quince than apple. That's what I would suggest. So I will suggest it. It's more quince than apple. Okay, let's try it. Cheers. Solid tannins. Um, no, yeah, well, gentle tannins actually. No. There's tannin there. It's 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 obvious, but it's not overpowering. I'm just not really drying my mouth out at all. Minerality. Um, it's light. 
it is quite fizzy. Um, this, yeah, the stuff's starting to happen now. The stuff's starting to come, come like evolve in the glass. There's almost like a a, a doy smell, like a doyness to it, bread dough, you know, that sort of yeasty smell, maybe. Light, refreshing, quite crisp. Um, it doesn't feel that keyed. It doesn't have that kind of baked apple, apple pie, chatata, demerara kind of character. Aged, you know, like a um, ripe red apple kind of character that you'd expect from a keyed cider. It's much lighter. It's much more refreshing. Um, if I bought this at a keyed cider, I'd be a little bit like. Is this a keep cider? It doesn't feel like a keep cider. It doesn't taste like a keep cider. I don't know how much quince has gone into this either. I don't know how much it's watered it down, quinced it down, whatever that means. I would say this is clean, crisp, light, refreshing. Maybe a little bit of kind of like a, there's certainly that wet stone character in there actually. For those of you who don't know what I mean by that, it's like, wade into a mountain stream, find a nice stone, pick it up and lick it. Ugh. Minerality. That's what I mean when I say minerality. Um, if you've never done that, then what are you waiting for? Um, kind of simple though, this one. Kind of simple. I thought the quince was more challenging and actually I preferred it. This is perfectly good. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this. But unfortunately, Martin actually sets his own bar quite high. I'm not sure this quite meets it. I think I'd want something a little bit richer. If it's keyed and it's got quince in, I think I'd want something a little bit more oomph. But it's only 4.8. So that's going to tell you it's a little bit light. Um, this is the 2019 as well. I have had this before. Probably the 2018, possibly the 2017 actually. And it was bigger and richer than this. So maybe I have an expectation, and it's not meeting that expectation. Um, having said all that, I suspect it'll warm up a bit, and then when I turn the camera off, and then I'll go, oh, actually, that's going on, and oh, actually, that's going on. And it might start to, you know, perform a few more tricks, if you like. But got to, you've got to judge it as I see it here and now. And here and now, I like it. I'll happily drink it. Um, it's not setting my world on fire. I'd rather have the quince one that I had. I'd rather have the, the Pinot Noir skins, you know, that, that guy, whatever it was called, I forget. Uh, that was that was more challenging, more interesting, there's more going on, in my opinion. But it's just my opinion. Okay, there you go. Pom Pom from Pilton. And there it is. Okay, guys. Thank you for watching. We will continue this odyssey. I'm going to Devon on Friday for a week. And we're actually staying in an orchard. So I think I'm going to do some tastings from actually inside an orchard. Won't that be cool? Yeah, Chris, it will. Thanks. Look forward to it. All right, guys. As always, thank you for watching. Hope to see you again soon. And until then, cheers.